Hi, my name is Nick from Global. I'm going to be talking to you today about the Tiger Bridge product, which is a solution that intelligently and dynamically assigns data to hot, cool or archive cloud tiers, as well as on-premise, object, network or tape LTFS storage. In this video we're going to be talking about the newer version of Tiger Bridge version 4. One of the major changes in Tiger Bridge version 4 is the addition of NAS as a source for Tiger Bridge. So Tiger Bridge can then look at third party NAS systems and move that data to cloud, tape or object storage or indeed other NAS storage. Other improvements that have been made in Tiger Bridge version 4 include versioning, improved partial restore and caching, and greater ability to synchronize data across geographically separate locations. So let's jump in and have a look at the demo of Tiger Bridge version 4 that we have set up. So here we have two machines. The first is a Tiger Bridge server that is connected to a NAS and this NAS has some data on it that we can share. The second machine is a client machine that also has access to the same NAS device and can hence see the same data. So switching back to my Tiger Bridge machine, let's run Tiger Bridge application. So you can see that we're using, in this example, Microsoft Azure as our bridge target. But as I've previously said in the introduction, this cloud target could be any cloud target, including AWS and Google Cloud, for example. Let us open up our Azure portal. And in here, we can see that we have some containers. One of the containers here is labeled NAS. And if I open it up, you can see that that NAS container is completely empty. So what we're going to do in our example here is we're going to use Bridge to connect our NAS, our third party NAS share, to that NAS container in the cloud, which is running in Azure. So to configure Tiger Bridge, the first thing we have to do is enter the share path. And this is a path for the NAS that we're going to add as our source. We also have to add in the username and password for that share. And then we also need to add in what's called a local path. And this local path is the local directory on this machine that we're going to use as a shadow directory for the NAS. So any files and information on the NAS will have a corresponding zero byte file in that local path. And it's to that local path that we apply the Tiger Bridge commands, as you'll see later. So once that's configured, we can just hit apply. And then we need to select our sharing destination. So in this case, we're selecting Azure. We've entered all the credentials. And here you can see that I've selected our NAS as a target. So we've set up our source, which is a NAS, and I've set up our destination is Azure. In the setup, we created the folder bridge local. And if we go to that folder now, as you can see, it's already got some data in it. And this is because Bridge is already replicating from the NAS to the cloud. Just as a reminder, this Bridge local file system is just a representation of what's on the NAS. So all the files are zero byte, as you can see here. So this local Bridge folder doesn't have to represent a large amount of storage. It just represents what's on the NAS. So you can hear our NAS file system and here our bridge file system and they're both exactly the same. So we can have a look in greater detail at our local volume by right clicking on the properties and this will show you how many files there are on the NAS and how many of these have been replicated to the cloud target. Then if I go to our Azure instance and refresh the NAS bucket that we have here we can now see that it's being populated with all the files from the NAS. And it's really important to note here 
that Tiger Bridge has no vendor lock-in at all. You can just natively see all the files that are there. There's no separate file in, uh, file system being implemented, so you can extract that data from Bridge from Azure or any of the other cloud providers whenever you need. Moving away from the Azure interface and back to our local bridge folder, we can right click and you can see here the standard bridge commands that you might be familiar with. To give one example of this, on the local drive uh, we can select this file here called penguins.jpg. I can right click and select to reclaim space of this file. In the NAS you will notice that this file has been replaced by a placeholder file if you will called penguins.jpg.offline and as we can see here that file has zero bytes so it's it's a placeholder and the space has been reclaimed the file has been moved to the Azure bucket in this instance. To the restore that file it's just as simple all we need to do is right click the, the, the file that we want to retrieve the .offline file and click retrieve file and it's as simple as that the file would be repopulated to the NAS. So moving to my other machine, the client machine, that is also installed with the Tiger Bridge Sync client. Here we can see the same NAS as share as before. And I can open it up and I can see, for example, a file Tulip. So I can select that file and right click again and select to reclaim space. And in a moment you'll see that the file has been replaced by one of those placeholders with the dot offline extension. Likewise, I can also do the restore in exactly the same way, restoring that offline file by right clicking and hit clicking restore. And as you can see, my tulip file is back. Tiger also leverages the power of the cloud storage to provide versioning of files. So going back to the bridge server, let's open that uh, JPEG penguins file again and let's make a quick change. If I just draw a circle in here that'll be fine and save that. Now switching back to my client machine, let's have a look at the properties of that penguin file. Here we find the file, so we can open that and you can see that we've got our red circle in there. But if I right click and go to properties, I can see now that there are two versions of the file. We have the original one and the new version. So I can roll back to the orig original version now. So let's do that. And then if I open up our penguins file, our penguins are back without the circle with the unaltered image. Tiger is utilizing the power of the cloud, in this case, versioning in Microsoft Azure, but it is the same process for uh, Amazon S3 and Google Cloud. We can also use the power of the cloud to undelete files that have been deleted either by accident or maliciously. So I've selected a few files here and deleted them. Again, the versioning process in the cloud also allows us to undelete these files. So you can see here I've undeleted them and they're back. But if you notice here that they're only here as offline files. And so to retrieve them fully from the cloud, we just need to select them and right click to do retrieve file. And the full files would be brought back from the Google Azure or AWS account. As we can see here, the files are now back. Of course, the obvious application for this, as I've said, is to protect against accidentally deleted or accidentally modified files. But there is also the, the, the possibility to use this solution to protect against ransomware attacks and viruses. If I show you by selecting a folder here, and then I can right click on that folder and go to properties, and then come into the versioning tab. What we can do is we can analyze that folder against a timestamp.
and that acts a bit like a time machine and I can analyze the contents of that folder and I can see here that I have 25 files the 26th version in this case is that penguin file that we deleted earlier and then I rolled back so this shows the state of the file system against a particular timestamp so I could in theory restore the file system to a state before a ransomware attack for example using the versioning system Hi, it's Nick from Global and in this Tiger Bridge version 4 video I'm going to talk a little bit more about Adobe workflows with Tiger Bridge version 4. In the previous video uh, we had a quick look at how Tiger Bridge version 4 works with third-party NAS systems and how the NAS systems can be connected to cloud storage buckets. So here I have a Windows machine, uh, it can be virtual or it could be on-prem and what I'm going to do is open up a folder here and as you can see I've created a, an Adobe folder with nothing in it so I'm going to run bridge uh, and in the bridge we're going to use that uh, select that local drive and local folder Adobe which doesn't have anything in it and we're going to connect that to a uh, Azure instance a bucket in the cloud which is uh, Adobe demo and that uh, Adobe bucket in the cloud has got some uh, video content in it. So we can close out now that that started and if we open up our Adobe folder on our local machine we can see that it has started to populate with data from the cloud already. So let's go ahead and open uh, Adobe Premiere and uh, what we can do is we can drag some files in there or a file in there from our local volume which is obviously the uh, zero byte file so let's drop that into Adobe like so and then if we go to the properties of that file we can see here that it's a um, uh, 3.7 uh, so gig file and a few hundred megabytes of that have already been uh, downloaded but as we can see in uh, Adobe, we can just scroll through it and we can see that although only a few hundred megabytes have been downloaded, the file is still perfectly usable. So we can see if we just pop back here and look at properties again, we can see that uh, the file size uh, downloaded is now, uh, now around 700 megabytes out of the 3.7 gig. As you can see we have a responsive timeline in the Adobe Premiere software so this shows how Tiger Bridge can be used to connect existing media into the cloud and start working with it locally and transparently. So let's have a look at using uh, Tiger Bridge to extend workflows into the cloud. Uh, to demonstrate this I'm going to be using uh, the Adobe Bridge product so let's go ahead and open that now It'll load up and in here we can see that we've got um, a folder labeled AI so you can open it up there's, there's nothing in there but we'll run Bridge and what we'll do is we'll use uh, Bridge to connect uh, that folder AI on our local system to um, uh, a particular Amazon S3 folder uh, that can run uh, some uh, cognitive services. So for example here what I'm going to do is grab a bunch of pictures um, and I'm going to copy those into the AI folder uh, and hence Bridge will move those into uh, the AWS. So you'll notice as we do that in the uh, Adobe Bridge interface that uh, if you look at the keyword section you'll soon uh, just in a couple of moments start to see uh, that keyword uh, information start to uh, be populated there it goes it's uh, populating now so what we've done is we've we've copied those um, files into an uh, image recognition uh, service in the cloud um, so what I can do is run a search for example for uh, building and that'll pull up all the um, all the files that uh, match that search criteria 
Uh, and what's important to note is these are these are local files. So in effect, what Tiger is doing is uh, it's using the Adobe XP XMP protocol to ingest those keywords or inject those keywords into the uh, JPEG files. So you can see how that could be a, a, a really useful tool, uh, but it's not um, it's not limited uh, to uh, image recognition or object recognition. Uh, of course, Amazon and, and and other providers have a whole uh, wealth of um, other AI services. So um, let's start another instance of Bridge, and um, let's connect uh, another folder with uh, uh, dot mo dot mov. Um, uh, files into uh, a new AWS bucket. So let's do this AWS connect and then let's select this uh, Adobe uh, Movies uh, MOV bucket. So this is connecting into a service uh, that actually uh, recognizes um, uh, celebrities. So um, what I'll do is I'll find a folder here, just one second. Is a folder, and in here, um, what I'm going to do is put in some um, dot movs that I've got. So let's just select a few of these um, these files here. There's some sort of U.S. anchor personalities and such. So the process is going to take a little while longer than with the uh, the image recognition, object recognition, because the the files are obviously busy, uh, bigger. But the concept is is largely the same. The files uh, will be replicated to the cloud and then processed by the the AI in the cloud, and then the keywords will come back and be again injected into the files locally for the uh, Adobe Bridge product to uh, to be displayed there. So just processing at the moment, and here we are. We've got. Uh, We've got some keyword information starting to arrive. As I said, this take a little bit longer because um, because the files are larger. So let me take you through sort of one final example of um, another workflow that's interesting. Let's just fire up Bridge again, and and what we'll do is we'll connect to another bucket. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll select a, a local folder called Proxy. Uh, and then we'll connect to an Amazon S3 bucket um, that uh, has a uh, transcode service for generating proxies. So we're just connecting uh, our local here and carry on. There we are. Right. So let's find uh, let's find some. Um, I think I've got some movie trailers. So I'll just grab um, grab those. So uh, so here we are. I've selected one of the files uh, and uh, dropped that over into the uh, Adobe Bridge into the folder. And of course, our Bridge Tiger Bridge application is going to replicate that off to the uh, S3 bucket in the cloud for processing. So if we come back to our local proxies folder, um, it's uh, we're going to have to wait a little while for the transcoding to happen. But uh, here we are. Pop. We've got the um, we've got that folder uh, transcoding back down, and if we go to properties, we can see that the file is um, circa sort of 16 megabytes on there, um, and uh, versus the uh, the original file, which is what uh, just a couple of hundred um, couple of hundred megabytes. So you know, as as just as example, that's uh, that's one kind of really useful uh, workflow in the cloud and um, uh, the proxies can obviously be used for editing in Adobe and um, can be linked uh, through to the original file. Um, so uh, this is particularly useful for uh, for editing if if uh, users have got sort of low bandwidth connections uh, to the cloud. Uh, it's quite a useful tool for those guys. But anyway, I hope um, hope you found that interesting. Uh, a brief summary of uh, of the advantages of using uh, uh, Tiger Bridge uh, with Adobe, uh, and it's a case of sort of watch this space also for uh, more exciting developments coming down the uh, down the line. If you have any questions about the Tiger Bridge product, either for the NAS or uh, uh, you know the third party NAS for the cloud or or, or how it integrates with Adobe, or indeed running uh, running Tiger Stores, uh, Tiger Spaces, or Tiger Bridge actually in the cloud, 
then do please contact uh, your uh, global distribution uh, account manager uh, or myself, uh, Nick uh, Warburton. Uh, you can reach me at nickw at globaldistribution.com. Thanks very much for your time.